No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world, and today we got a up and coming sensation, Lou Ratchet, on the podcast. How you feeling, man? Appreciate you. I'm good, bro. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the God. We are the Breakfast Club. <laughs> got you. You've been thinking about that for a while. <laughs> yeah, that's my nigga. No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. There it is. That's not a little bit not, not white enough though. All my right. my voice is like unmistakably just Caucasian as fuck. How you feeling? I'm straight, bro. I've been, uh, you know, I mean, trying to get rid of the roaches in my crib and shit. Really? I got roaches, bro. Do you really? Real life roaches. I, I've had that problem as well. But they wood roaches, though. Like, so it's like where I live, there's trees and shit. Like, I can't. I'm cussing too much. No. All right, but yeah. I don't mean, what, you think I look at you? That means you're cussing too much? No, yeah. we, we encourage that. Like, I don't know, bro. I tried to spray. I tried to put the bait out. It, it's over. Yeah. It's over. That's a terrible film. My first uh, spot where we used to do the no jumper interviews, I saw uh, Hoodrich Pablo Juan like jump out of his fucking seat because there was a roach crawling over the place, and that was just happening like randomly throughout interviews. Roaches I was everywhere. Yeah, yeah, I had one crawl on me while I was trying to sleep. I was shook. That's a good point. People, you get to the point in your life where you don't have roaches and you take it for granted. That's what I'm saying. You're trying to get there. That's exactly what I'm trying to do. <laughs> trying to find your way to a post roach existence. How you been though, bro? Great, man. Actually, it was weird. Like, you came in and my kid was here. I had, like, a surprise visit from my kid. So then it's like, I'm code switching. Like, I'm in fucking interview mode. And then I'm, like, dad mode. And it's like, holy fuck, I've never had to do these at the same time before. Yeah. I fucks with her. She cool as hell. That's my little cousin. What's her name? <laughs> Parker. Parker. Parker Mac. Parker. She Parker already has, G. She has, She's she has, straight up G. Dep. She, she got a hood name from C Mac the Look. He told That's he's, my nigga. Yeah, yeah. Said, I peed Parker Mac. So. All right. I'm riding with that. Tell her, I think, where your mom at? <laughs> What's up with uh, Pittsburgh? That's where you're from? Ooh, I love Pittsburgh, man. I'm actually, man, I just recently moved to uh, ATL and shit. And I'm oh, like, okay. I, miss, I miss Pittsburgh already, bro. Like, I'm damn near thinking about going back already. I fucks with Pittsburgh heavy. Really? You ever been there? Uh, I don't know. Probably not. You gotta go. You look like you would eat permanis and shit, bro. Like, is, is that the spot? Yeah. What like, kind of food is that? I don't know. They be making sandwiches and shit. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I figured. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> they got to have sandwiches. There's only so many ways to put food together. Yeah. But, okay, what was your uh, upbringing like out there? I mean, I grew up uh, on the Hill District. Uh, I mean, it's kind of rough. Uh, Chauncey Drive, to be specific. Shout out to everybody up, Chauncey. Uh, like, I mean, it's projects. It's, it's just like everywhere else, bro. Like, you know right. what I mean? Just go through regular shit. Um but I mean, yeah, that's about it. I was watching a video of you and uh, a bunch of other people, I think, in like the yeah, projects. Yeah, the, my people. But you're all roasting each other. Like, oh, the, uh, get ratchet. Yeah, we try to do like some hood, like some hood, low budget, like wilding out type shit. And I, I felt like this is like kind of a peek into <laughs> what the average person from this area is like. Yeah, 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 yeah. We all ripped. That's all how we came up. Like everybody make fun of each other type shit. Uh, that's like the first thing you learn when you're a little kid type shit. Just start flaming niggas, you know what I mean? Go ahead, big head, low neck nigga, like, you know what I mean? Just little shit. You throw your little, yeah, from the womb, you just come out knowing how to rip type shit. Yeah, because when I was watching that, everybody's jokes, at least for the segment I was watching, were like predicated on like, I'm so broke that. Yeah. That yeah, is so the opposite yeah, of yeah, LA where yeah. everybody's fake rich. It's like so weird to hear people actually acknowledging that they're right, broke. Right, right, right. I like to just keep it real. You see me with the Crocs on, like I ain't got no money, bro. <laughs> if you um, really, you don't got no money. I mean, I'm. You hopped on the plane and flew out here. It can't be that dire. Yeah, but this, this like a investment type shit. I'm broke uh, as hell, bro. Like I'm, I'm straight though. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Right. Ah. <laughs> I feel it. Oh, yeah, and I'm from the same hood as Jimmy Wapo, if y'all know about Elm Street and all that shit. Rest in peace, right? Yeah, R.I.P. Wapo. Yeah, he, he died the same day as that. He would have been one of the best, like, if he was still here. Hands down, top five type shit, like, right now. Damn, you feel like he was kind of the, the, hey, the next man. big hope for the city? Not even just the city, for the rap game, period. I to feel like dude was... Dude was slept on, for real, for real. Like, yeah, just because Pittsburgh, we like city of the underdogs type shit. Right. Definitely. Is that, uh, but like growing up, were you, did you find yourself attracted to like comedy and trying to make people laugh from a real young age? Yeah. yeah, I mean, I was always, like I was quiet. Don't get me wrong, like growing up, I was always quiet. But then, like I would have my little out, outbursts and shit like that. Like, yeah, it's just like a way of like, 
I don't know. Like, some niggas rap, I do comedy. Like, you got to get that shit out some way. Like, even, like, in my comedy, like, I'll put trauma in my comedy. Like, everybody got their own little outlet where I'm from. You know what I mean? Like, you might draw. You might, uh, I don't know, do art, do whatever. Like, but that's just my way of doing it type shit. Who are you influenced by, though, that you were looking Ooh, at on the I, internet? I would say, wait, on the internet? Yeah, or, or really, on TV, I whatever you big were. on the internet comedy, okay. honestly. Like, I more so grew up, like, watching... I mean, the legends, like Dave Chappelle, he number one. Uh, Richard Pryor, easy. Like, I feel like he don't get the respect. You know what I mean? Because he was back in the day. Like, a lot of people mm. don't go back and dig up his shit, but Richard Pryor was a bad motherfucker. Like, I fucked with him. This is uh, true. And Eddie Murphy. I would say Eddie Murphy. So you were, like, more a fan of the classics, and then you sort of figured out how to translate it into yeah. social media Oh, and media I content? can't leave out, like, Mike Epps, because I feel like he brought something that wasn't really, like, that hood comedy. Like, nobody mm-hmm. really dug that deep into it. Like, Mike Epps really took it there. Like, I like, I, yeah. I respect that. But so do you feel like, like, did that just occur to you that you weren't going to go the regular uh comedian route no 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 to keep it real with you i wasted a lot of time like i did i bro i went to college and shit like and that man for what waste a lot of time uh labor and employment relations basically hr so i was in there with them yeah i mean you know what i mean doing a lot of so HR, you, yeah. you were gonna be the guy that i would go to to be if like you wanted hey, a job laura yeah. smacked my ass on the job and i'm pissed and i'm yeah yeah really. yeah that's how <laughs> you were gonna shit, be the yeah. one medi- mediating so, those so she touched you bro yeah i was so here's how we gonna do that she didn't for the record all right she would never touch me she but cool. shout out to laura though. <laughs> but that like why did you think that that was something that you we were going to be involved in bro, it was like I knew, all right, so I had somebody who was already doing that type joint. You know what I mean? Like somebody, mm-hmm. like a, not a family member per se, but it was like a a, a friend of the family type joint. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I don't know. I just took it. It was the easy route. Keep it all the way real with you. I couldn't do no engineer. I couldn't do this. I couldn't do that. I'm like, all right, fuck it. I'm going to just go in there and yeah. And just, just be a human who yeah. re- helps other humans relate to each other, right? Yeah. No, because, okay, I know a dude like who owns like a big company, and he told me, he's like, once we got to this number of employees, we had to get an HR person, and I'm like, like why? And he's like, you know, if one of them feels like they're sexually harassed by the other one, or one of them feels uncomfortable, in which we get an HR person, it's like an insurance policy so that they are going to have a harder time suing you. Yeah. I was just like, holy fuck, that is so depressing that at some point I'm going to have to invest in that. I hated that shit. I used to be in there with my... I was the only nigga in there that was always coming at me because I, like, do little shit. Like, I don't know. I was always, like... I had, like, a certain mentality. I couldn't dedicate myself to the job because it's like, I really... Y'all ain't doing shit for me type shit. So I just, like, leave work early, like, sneak out, steal shit, like, little petty shit from the job. You know what I mean? And it's like... You you feel what I'm saying, (laughs) bro? Yeah. So, like, I don't know. And then one day... The whole thing that just made me like, all right, I'm out. Chicky was, uh, they was like, she was beefing with me, right? But she was doing some shit like through this little chat. We had this little chat joint. So she like sending something to another chick, but she ain't know. I got the chat joint. She talking shit like, if he does that, if he leaves again, I'm going to kill him. I'm like, ho, ho, little shorty. And yeah, I just dipped up out of there after that, basically. You were over it. Yeah. Were you influenced by Toby from HR, from the office? You've never seen the office. Never I, mind. I, ain't I take it back. I take I'm it back. Bad, bro, if you ain't bad. seen the office, you're not gonna know. But trust, he's like the the best human relations officer ever. Yeah, I fuck with Steve Carell heavy. Yeah, he hated him on the show. Right, he held him back from being funny a lot. I got um, you. Okay, but so you waste all the time trying to do HR, and then what? And then, ooh, you going like this, bro? I, I went into the uh, to the sex rated the. Rated, yeah, you know I man. I knew that's where he was going with. I knew yeah, it was gonna be something porn related. Yeah, I tried that, bro. That shit was crazy. Like, and it definitely like we was on the like little feature page and all that shit. Like, I was doing a little bit, but bro, the money wasn't coming in. But wait, wait like, what I, were you I doing was, exactly? Like on Pornhub and shit. Like, yeah, you know I mean, my name was like not my name, but you know I mean, the, you were a cam girl. Oh, me? No, I'm oh. saying that. that you know I mean, uh, her right there. But yeah. Oh, okay. So like. So you be providing the D? I mean, not no more, not on camera. I be chilling now, but like, right. that's what I was doing, bro. Yeah. You were, you were. I was trying to just make it any way out, and then I'm like, yo, that's shit. I was trying, yeah. I don't know. I love a story of someone who makes it up out the hood through their penis. 
My nigga, my nigga. I, mean, I, mean, I, I ain't gonna say I made it though, bro. The niggas was sleeping me. Bro, you left guess, the hood at least for a little while. Yeah, I got work on that pipery. Mm. You know I mean, I, got, I know a guy. All right. Brian Pumper. Oh, I know, dude, too. Not knowing, but yeah, I know you talking he, about. He, he could help you out. Yeah. We had a girl on here the other day who we were asking her if she knew Brian Pumper, and she was like, all my friends fucked him. I fucked these pieces. Huh. I'm like, wow, that's so amazing. You get around. Yeah. You fuck with, uh, from back in the day, Wesley Pipes, he, ugh, ugh, stupid little white bitch, ugh. Did he say that? Yeah, no, nah, he would just say wild as shit. Like, bro, he was a nasty nigga. I fucked with Wesley Pipes, though. I never got into, like, racial porn. Or like they're sort of pressing the issue in that. Not regard. even saying that, but he he just got around, bro. He was definitely the man back in like I feel like early two thousand. So like when I was a little kid, when you first start tuning in, yeah, that's what that's what it was. Him, uh, Mr. Marcus, Mr. Marcus, yeah, he's Niggas still big. Like that. For real, I think so. That's what's up. Shout out to Mr. Marcus, man. Yeah. <laughs> no, if you're reliable as a porn dude, there's a lot. Of, you, you could be in the game because yeah, there's only a few dudes though. All, there's a lot of women you see go through that industry. A lot, a lot of weirdos. Dudes. A lot. A lot of weird dudes who like fucking end up like you know addicted to drugs and shit, and the girls hate them. For real. They, they come, they, I've had girls like complain to me, be like, "Oh, these dudes come in, they smell like shit, they stink like alcohol, they've been out all night partying, uh, they show up on the job, no sleep, and they just can't get hard." Uh, I'm like, "Fuck, that's crazy." Damn. See, that's the yeah, it's a wild industry, I guess. Okay, so then <laughs> your porn career didn't work out? Hell no, nah. I'm gonna say like basically no. Nah. Overall, hell no. Nah. So I left that, and then like I put up a little comedy video like. I don't even remember. My first video was like, then they're like clowning, clowning my job type shit or some shit like that. But like, uh, I don't know, that joint did a little bit of numbers and I just from then on, I was like, ah, oh, I might as well stick with this. But it was like some shit, like I, I was like the class clown and all that in high school. So I'm like, ah, right, I could do this. Like, you know what I mean? So I just kept pumping out content, keep pumping it out. Man. Cause well, bro, I went back on your YouTube channel. The first thing I found was the Pittsburgh Crips skit. See, that ain't even, I, nah, that, I was already, yeah, nah, I had some joints, but they just wasn't, they wasn't making no money. I just took them joints down. Really? Yeah. You trying to keep it like quality on the channel? You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So I took it serious after a minute. So I'm like, all right, get all the trash up out there and put that up there. Yeah. Right. So were you getting some traction? Were people actually fucking with it from the beginning? Yeah. Yeah. And that's what kept me going. Like, it was just people in my, people from my hood that knew me, people uh, from the city just showing love. Like, and it was just like, they just kept saying, keep going. You got something with this. And I'm like, all right, let's get it. Yeah. Because I mean, like, on one hand, if you start just making funny videos that are being shared around Twitter and Instagram and shit, it's like, it's good, but also there's like there's no money associated with it, but it lets you know that people are reacting to it. Like, how, how did you feel about? It? Were you excited about this opportunity that people were? You I know? was, but I ain't. I was like, I was more so scared. I ain't want to be the nigga who was just like, all right, you funny, you got some followers, but I ain't making no money. And I, I dealt with that for a minute. You know what I'm saying? Like, I wasn't really making no money off of it. Right. That shit weak. But just knowing that that many people are like even interacting with your shit has got to feel pretty good at a certain point in comparison yeah. to like being unknown just dude from the hood to even yeah. have you know th thousands of people seeing your shit has yeah. got to feel kind of crazy right but even that though like it's like the same shit i went through in high school it's the same shit now it's just on a bigger stage type shit like in high school everybody was running up to me ah, he's so, he's so, he's so, he's so, he's so, like you know what i mean <laughs> yeah. definitely had love in high school but little shit like that yeah. definitely yeah, when I think about it, there's there's just been a lot of people who've kind of come up. Like, it seems so novel to me at first, like when I was interviewing Boonk or some shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, like, now that just seems like, you know, I mean, his shit is, like, kind of extra fucked up. He was know? doing, like, prank type shit. And just yeah, stealing yeah, shit. Yeah, 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 or all the people who were, like, smashing milk jugs in the 7-Eleven. Yeah, I that. That was a wild era. Well, you think them was real, though? He was really just going in, just going wilding out, like them cars and all that? I think at a certain point it was real, and then I think over time he kind of started. But he, Ooh. Boonk was always someone who said that he didn't like doing stuff that was fake at all. So I, like, I, th I think I it, more that. of his shit was real than most people, which is why it was unsustainable. I respect it. Yeah. You never got into, like, doing pranks or anything? Hell yeah, was no. Focus on the comedy I ain't shit. even try and go down that route, bro. I ain't trying to get hit up, get wet up, none of that. Like, yeah. Chilling. <laughs> 
that was the best dude the best was when on youtube when you first started to see like prank in the hood yeah and yeah. it would just be somebody yeah. getting the shit beat out of him but i feel like that shit might have been real for a little bit and then turned fake so yeah, quick you could tell how drab be sometimes that, that that joint be set up i know what you're talking about though the pranks and shit yeah i was just like white people thinking like i'm gonna go to the hood and like pretend to yeah, fart on someone yeah, yeah. and then yeah, they're just they getting their head like cracked that. and it's like that was like so satisfactory to watch just because you're like yes that's why you shouldn't have done this you're getting beat up i feel it fuck yeah. yeah um so being from pittsburgh though did you like know anybody who had anything going on or do you have anybody to collab with that was able to help you get going and that's a good question uh fuck i hope i ain't forgetting little by right now <laughs> but basically no <laughs> Nah, I mean we so small, bro. You know the names that come out of Pittsburgh. Like it ain't ain't really too many of us. Like Wiz, he been made it. Then you got Wap, you got Mac Miller, you got who else is it? You know what I'm saying? Like it ain't really. Yeah. I don't know. I hope I ain't shitting on nobody right now. But yeah. Wiz Khalifa don't come around no more. You feel like he doesn't talk about Pittsburgh like he should? I can't speak. Uh, I don't know he's that nigga, bro. The scenes. I, don't, I don't know that nigga, for real, I know he's like standing outside the bodega just being like, man, fuck Wiz. He ain't come back here in years. But that's the whole thing. He ain't even from my hood. Like, he's supposedly, he from, he from Hazelwood, right? Uh, I don't know. So I'm from the hill. Like, I don't, we don't, I don't know nobody who knows him. Like, you get what I'm saying? Like, yeah. he with two different hoods. Like Once you leave, once you've been in L.A. long enough, you're from L.A. I feel Maybe. it. I feel I fucks with LA. Too. But he gave you guys the fucking anthem. He put the spotlight on the, the on anthem. The, yeah, yeah. So like shout out the Wiz. You yeah, still drive around listening to that song every day? Hell no. I mean, no, no, no. It's more so, but I still I still bang WAP though. I'm gonna always bang WAP. Right. I'll probably be fifty years old still, yeah. I respect that. Okay. So uh did you know a bunch of like were there not gangs where you're from like that made you feel like it was okay to create the pittsburgh crips see i wasn't doing it as a shot like i knew i could fuck around get killed behind that but at the same time this is i'm doing it like this is my dream but like it wasn't even shitting on the crips because a lot of the crips that's from pittsburgh was fucking with it like you get what i'm saying so you did know crips from there though okay yeah yeah like i lived in a few crip neighborhoods before like it was like yeah it's all love like but I don't know. Yeah, most matter of fact, yeah, no, the Crips was sharing it and shit. Like, they definitely fucked with it. Nobody caught feelings about it? The niggas who caught feelings about it be like, it be the corniest motherfuckers. It'll be people from other cities. Like, I don't even know. It'll be from some, I don't even know, but it'll be like, uh, something I wonder what the niggas from Homewood and Hazelwood think about that. But meanwhile, I fucks with the niggas from, you know what I'm saying? They fucks with me. Right. So, yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Um, but, okay, was that one of the ones that blew up the most? At first, at first, at first, uh, I'm trying to think. The biggest shit so far, like, I feel like it's still the where your mom at shit. Cause, like, that's what <laughs> everybody come up to me. Like, if I, even I, people I don't know, just out, where your mom at? Nigga, say it for me, where your mom at? <laughs> so, like, that's, I feel like that's the biggest joint. Do you feel like that was kind of the stuff that's reacted the best is basically you just like emphasizing characters that we've all kind of like run across. That's what I be trying to do. Like, and that, I mean, first, for real, for real, I wasn't even trying to, I ain't know everybody was going to relate to it. Like, mm-hmm. I did it more so like, it's, I'm just telling my shit, like what I've been through. Like, so my mom, she was bad as hell on the hook back in the day. You get what I'm saying? Like, really? my mom's still beautiful, but like, yeah, back in the day, like all the niggas wanted her, da 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 da. So I mean, you walk into the store, everybody, little little Mina, where you going, nigga? Where you, come here, nigga. Where your mom at? Right. All that shit punching on you, them little hits be hurting and all that. Yeah. Right. Because hey, I'm like laughing my ass off watching that video because it just seems so realistic. But then I'm also thinking like, <laughs> I don't really know anybody who ever said anything like that to me. But I can imagine it. It seems like a real man, stereotype. Man, I had niggas. The nigga Spoonie back in the day Your mother is special man mm. Like it's shit like that Hits you like Whoa I'm supposed to I'm That's supposed hard to, to have a hot this, mom nigga. dude Yeah it is bro Like she was like She was like Halle Berry in the hood Like it was Yeah it was crazy So that's where a lot of that come from Is like yeah Yeah like A woman being hot It's like she's just walking around With just this like This value to her It's, it's like a dude having like a big ass chain on But you know You could take the chain like, you know, he could right. not have that chain if his fucking 
job goes bad or whatever. Right. But then like being a beautiful woman, you're just walking around with this precious cargo and right, everybody right, just right, acting right. weird as fuck to her because it's a fact and it's just I don't know, man. You see it all the time. Like walk you're like walking around with your girl and then you like walk away from her for a moment and then you just see these dudes just start sniffing around. They can just smell it. Yeah, I feel it. That's a weird feeling. I feel it. And especially you, y- y'all fucking celebs and shit, bro. Uh, it it's gets like, extra weird. Yeah, yeah, I already know, bro. Y'all can't. I really had dudes like come up to me and my girl and just like basically be like telling me they beat off to my girlfriend. Ooh. I mean, yeah, that's that's an awkward joint to hit me with because it's like a right. compliment at the same time. You saying she decent, like you're you saying she fine, so like yeah, good look. But at the same time, you're also like to I'm gonna kill you. Yeah, yeah, like get the yeah. fuck away from me. But you see, like you, you really get a taste of just how bad people's social skills are because that guy probably says things that creepy to girls all the time. Right. Probably every girl he wants to talk to, he just says something like equally strange. But then you ain't gonna get no poisa. <laughs> you don't <laughs> think so? How long you been in a relationship? Shit, I mean. Long time, bro. Long time. Yeah? Hell yeah. Sounds depressing. I mean, I'll be... <laughs> I'm chilling, I'm chilling. Yeah? Yeah, I, I, I keep that shit, you know what I mean? I don't know. Should I just call you? Does, does the world know that you're dating a white woman? Damn, he just called me out. But no, they do. They damn near do, though, because that's the porn and shit. Like, you get what I'm saying? Like, oh. that's, yeah. So your fans go back and they have access to the former Niggas porn be telling, archive? yeah, no, nah, this, matter of fact, put it this way. All right, so I'm in charge of the uh, Pornhub shit. I don't even know if I still got it up. But, like, all right, like, niggas will be uh, in the joint, like Lou Ratchet or something. Like, they'll be in the Pornhub comments, where your mom at, all that. Like, <laughs> yeah, so it's like, it's a whole, it's all tapped back together type shit. Yeah. How do you feel about the world seeing your meat? I don't give two fucks, bro. Like all That's that, real. I will literally if if it came down to it, if niggas ain't feel no type of way, like like not on no weird shit, bro. I'll do comedy, butt ass naked. Like you get what I'm saying? Like none of that phases me, bro. Hmm. Like this interview, I could do butt ass naked. Matter of fact, I see y'all be doing For a little the Patreon, Patreon joint. <laughs> you yeah. like that idea? <laughs> yeah, y'all done had girls squirt on it. The f- I already know y'all got right over there. Y'all got juices over here. A man named C Mac was sitting in your chair eating ass and pussy while a girl was doing a handstand yesterday. That shit is still in the air. I fucks with it. He ate rice and cheese off of her ass. I'm y'all still don't. just I can't get it out of my head. Wait, how how? She wait, what? She said three hundred bucks and I'll let him eat this food out of my ass. I said, done. She said, Y'all gonna cash at me? I said, Yes. When you said that, I was picturing like you had her shit it out. But no, nah, you saying that he just ate it off the ass? I love that idea too. No. Nah. Fill her nah. ass with food? No, but it was more like on. Nothing entered the anal cavity, luckily. I, I, that fucks with it. Yet. I fucks with it. But anything's possible. Yeah, I like how y'all doing that though. Right. I respect that. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a weird feeling like, oh, I've I've been doing podcasts for this long. We've been talking about nasty ass shit for this long. And then finally, after like six years, somebody ate ass on the podcast. Like, why why did that take so long? We should have done that so long ago. So wait, you dropping them bitches on YouTube? Patreon. Dot com slash no jumper. I. I, you like I, that? A little plug in there. I do. I fuss with it. <laughs> um, okay, so like as your shit has kept getting bigger and bigger, like what lessons have you learned about the kind of comedy that you want to do? Like what, what direction have you gone in and shit? I mean, I just I just keep to like what I what I like, you know what I mean? Like it's basically my own little niche. Like I just be doing like hug comedy. Just something that resonate with me, something that it make me laugh type shit. Mm. But it's like uh I mean, I'll probably start branching out. I mean, like, try to do, like, more. I don't know. I don't know, bro. Uh, Then I forgot the question type of thing. Just what works and what doesn't work in terms of the content that you've been I feel like when I try to do something, like, if I try to do something that was trendy, like, you was talking about the pranks and all that, it ain't going to work. Like, my peoples don't fuck with that. They see me for something else. Like, you get what I'm saying? Mm. They be liking when I do that, like, real personable, like, something real relatable to the hood. Like, or not even just the hood, but, like, yeah, like, I got my own little niche type joint. Yeah, they want you to speak on, like, you know, what's really going on in in the hoods and in places that don't necessarily have that spotlight, and they want to see you sort of shine light on it in a certain way. Me. I mean, Drewski is like 
kind of the king of that right now in right, the sense right, right, of right. just like identify something that is funny as fuck that we yeah. don't talk about like when i first seen him like pretending to be the dude who sells drugs outside the gas station in atlanta who got his lean and he's rolling a blunt yeah, and yeah, he's yeah, just yeah. saying all this stupid shit and you see that and you're kind of like fuck i know so many rappers that are basically this dude but i never seen somebody really make fun of it like this well before right i feel it he in there in there he yeah in there do you look at somebody like him like that's what's possible if, if this shit yeah that's what i'm saying yeah yeah and i think i just only thing is like i just got i gotta show them yeah means that i ain't no bad person like you mm. get what i'm saying i feel like i feel like that like my my fuckers might think like some of this shit is a little too real but it ain't it's really? just comedy bro you think what, what's what's too real like i don't know bro like i feel like like, I ain't, you know what I'm saying? Like, I might be looked at as, like, a street nigga, but I'm not, bro. Like, I'm just a comedian. You never really been on that? You never checked that life? I was, kind of, but it's like, you know what I'm saying? I checked the fuck back out once I got shot. You get what I'm saying? I'm checking, check right back out. Like, you said, I'm saying that easy. Right. Hey. Yeah, a lot of that shit that Drewski be doing, you have to keep, like, a very clean image in a way. See, C- now you telling me that I'm about to cry, bro. You no, telling no, me that? no. Yeah, yeah, but that's a different situation anyway. You don't got to do all that. But, like, just for, for an example, we took part of his interview, and we, we had a clip, and it was titled, Drewski Talks About Cheating His Way Through College. And then when he started to get some corporate deal, he had to kind of hit me up and be like, hey, can you, like, take that specific title down? And I was like, oh, okay. So... Uh, Things can get you canceled in in terms of doing a Nike deal or whatever. Damn. But I mean, realistically, like s- almost everyone I know is not going to be able to do shit like that because, like, if you're a rapper and you're talking yeah. about taking perks yeah. all the time yeah, and shit, yeah. like, uh, it automatically like closes the door on a little bit of stuff, you know. I never thought of it that way, but yeah, I'm gonna just keep putting it out. Whatever you know what I mean, the supporters like, I'm just keep putting that on. Yeah, because I mean, if you try to clean your shit up preemptively. Right. They're not going to. And if I don't like doing it, like, I don't know. I ain't going to fuck with it. What's the point of doing it if I don't enjoy it? Like, you got to think still, it's funny. Yeah, that's how my whole point. I, and I got, it got to be something personal to me, too, like, at the end of the day. So. Mm. But is it tough, though, because it's like the on YouTube, if you want to make good money off YouTube. Oh, yeah, they, they, be, they be definitely demonetizing. A oh, lot, they get a you? Lot. Yeah, oh. My best joints, bro, a lot of my best joints, I ain't get paid for that. I'm doing that for the people. Like, you get what I'm saying? Really? Like, And that's, yeah, yeah. But you're incentivized to put out a ton of shit and also for it to be kind of long because, like, a lot of your shit is, like, 30 seconds. Right, Cause right, right, that's, right, right. You just cram a bunch of jokes into, like, a short piece of content. Right. But on YouTube, it's like, no, make a 10-minute video and also make a 10-minute video every single day. Right. I mean, I'll, I'll do a little bit of that. I'll get more into that at some point. Right. Yeah, I did notice that, like, that one you did about the lawyer yeah, recently. Yeah, no, so you I can see, I can stretch it out a little bit, but that's, yeah, I'm trying to get that money real quick. Like, because mm. I could have just summed it up in a quick uh, 45 minute, whatever. But it's a tough decision to make because, uh, you know, it's like the I art. like the short joints. I think they're funnier when they Me short. too. Yeah. 100%. But yeah. like when you when, when it's funny and short as fuck, I mean that's just that's yeah. gold right there. You on TikTok? When I was on TikTok, I, I mean I remade one, but I don't post on there. But like when I was on TikTok, they just kept taking my joints down, so I just gave up. Really? And then I, but then I see other motherfuckers ripping off my content and posting it, and they they blowing up off my shit. Really? I don't even know. I, don't, I just don't know how to use it. So uh, shout out to the little, uh, the, the nigga who made the Lou Ratchet page, like the fake joint. You got that joint booming. Oh, so they actually take your videos and turn yeah, it. Yeah, and he, he asked me and all that. And I was like, yeah, go ahead, bro, because I don't know how to work that shit anyway. Really? Yeah. You should repo it now. I ain't doing that. Because I, <laughs> I, I told that nigga he could do it. And like I said, I don't even, TikTok ain't my thing. Like, like a YouTube dude, uh, who, the dude who does the Soft White Underbelly channel, he was just telling me that there's a whole TikTok full of his his shit. And they just, he, he don't even know how to get it taken down. Yeah, ain't really much you could do. Like, I don't. I mean, you probably could. But they are like insanely hard to get in touch with. Right. How'd you get shot? Uh. Selling, selling weed. I got shot over twenty dollars, basically. Wow. The bullet cost damn near twenty dollars. Right. I mean, probably yeah. not, but it was, you know. Looking not. back at that shit, I was just 
just dumb, just dumb shit. Like, and then the week before that, or two weeks before that, I got shot at. Like, it was just, my life was going down real fast. But this is the same time, like, I'm still about to go to college and shit. Matter of fact, put it this way. When I got, when I got shot, I had just came back from a little global travel scholarship, bro. I won a scholarship to go to the United Kingdom and live there for a, uh, a month. I was staying with a host mother and all that, like a British mom. Like, you know what I mean? All that shit, like, it was cool as fuck, bro. And I come back, and I'm right back to the dumb shit. I told my little counselor, or not counselor, whoever, the group leader on the little trip and shit, I had told him, like, I'm like, bro, I don't want to go back. Like, when I'm in the uh, UK or whatever. As soon as I go back, I get shot. So just being out there and seeing all that shit, it made you feel kind of depressed about your living situation? Yeah, hell yeah. It's like I wanted to escape that shit. Mm. Like, you know what I mean? A lot of motherfuckers, like, glorified. I'm like, nah, bro, this shit ain't for me. Mm. I'm out here. Yeah, I don't fucks with it. Mm-hmm. I mean, I fucks with it. Like, I love going back. The vibe, you ain't going to find, like, the vibe of fucking Chauncey or the hell. Like, you ain't going to find that in too many hoods. Like, just the, the love up there is crazy. Second uh-huh. to none type shit. So when you go and, like, just hang out in the projects or whatever, do yes. you feel, does it feel like you're taking on, like, a big risk at this point like just because you're a little bit more known more of a target or is it is it still just fun to you i mean at this point it might be but at the same time it's like bro i know these niggas i grew up with these niggas like it is i don't know and i feel like it, it'd be a bad look on the hood for something to happen to me type shit you get what mm-hmm. i'm saying because it's already we already lost what wow, y'all can't you know what i'm saying like mm-hmm. somebody gotta make it out type shit i feel you when you say that you got shot selling weed, like how how the situation go? Somebody tried to run off on you or what? It was it was the dumbest shit ever, bro. Like basically we we uh what's it called? You show a nigga your hand. Like we told not we, but like words were said and it's like, uh, all right, we we coming back type shit. Cause I, I got robbed without my pistol type shit. Like mm-hmm. I ain't had no gun, so I had to go get it. But you know what I mean? And next thing you know, uh, like it was on some shit. Like, and then at the same time, hold on. Yeah, let me add this. I had some weak ass guns. I had a little deuce deuce with the little like tape on it. Like, it's like, bro, this motherfucker would shoot one time and then it jam up on my life. Like, so my man's had to use that joint. Like, that was the joint he had. And it was like, uh, I don't know. He would use that motherfucker, though. He would know how to use it. He'd keep, like, practicing that shit, like, and showing me, like, bro, I got it, I got it. Like, man, that shit, I ain't playing with that. But then the other joint, little weak-ass 32 revolver, like, man, I don't know. We was playing with little toy guns. Not toy guns, literally, but them joints was weak, bro. We wasn't right. we wasn't ready. Like seventh generation we, gun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and one of them was hot, bro. Like, it was just that whole, that whole shit was just terrible. Right. Dumb so, shit. Where'd you get hit? Ooh. One one was in my nuts, bro. I was leaking from my nuts. I, I bullshit you not. What, it went hold through on. the sack? I swear to God. Well, it ain't go. Yeah, like, bro, you know how when you get kicked in the nuts? Yeah. Like, you feel that motherfucker in your stomach almost? Yeah. Like, that's how it was for me, bro. Like, so first, I got hit. It was like, I don't know. Like, it's like, pow, 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 pow. Like, like I got hit uh, three leg joints, one nut joint. But when I felt the leg joints, like, it's like, it, that shit ain't even hurt because my adrenaline was, was rushing or whatever. So, like, I'm just like, shit, shit, shit. Like, I feel that I'm getting pushed back. Like, you get what I'm saying? And then, the, uh, yeah, like, I ain't feel it until, like, like, I'm still trying to stand up and all that shit. So I fall down. And then, uh, let's say, like, a minute go past, like, I'm looking around and shit. I just feel that shit in my stomach. I'm like, oh, shit, I got shot in my nuts. Then you see it, like, you see the blood coming. Like, it's like, oh, fuck, I'm leaking. It's like a nigga got a period type shit. (laughs) Yeah, I was leaking. Right. So what'd you do? The ambulance came or you just hop in a car or somebody drive to the hospital? Oh, yeah, nah. So, all right, luckily, there was an older dude. Like, there was a bunch of people there. So, like, luckily, I don't know where dude came from, but there were... I don't know. Somebody was helping me, and that shit helped me. Like, I feel like it saved my life because I was losing so much blood, bro. I'm, like, shivering. Like, you get what I'm saying? When you lose so much blood, it's like, like, you feel like you're going out type And you're, shit. like, 18, 19 at this I point? I was 17. 17. So, like, uh, yeah, no, nah, dude just kept saying, breathe. Breathe. Like, shit like that, bro. You don't even think in that situation. You ain't thinking about breathing. Huh. So, I'm, yeah, I'm just... 
<laughs> so you and you went to the hospital and it was just fine they removed the bullets and no I big mean, deal i was on crutches and shit but yeah I, I was cool i mean and that's a good thing like that that tissue and shit down there is regenerative like or whatever so on your balls yeah bro if you get shot in your nuts that shit gonna grow back but i feel like if they shoot through the actual nut that's gonna be bad but the sack the, uh, yeah <laughs> Yeah. The sack seems like it might regenerate. It, I don't know how it went because they said I'm straight basically, but like, I just I know I felt that shit. It felt like getting kicked in your nuts times a hundred, a thousand, whatever. But you haven't had any negative experiences in terms of no. Nah. Okay. No, nah. I mean it was little shit like I, when I went back to school and shit. There would be little shit like I just feel my shit start leaking. I'm really? like, oh shit, a nigga got a period in class. I gotta get the fuck up out of here. Wow. Yeah. One time I was riding my bike and I smacked myself in the nuts so hard with my bike seat trying to do this trick that uh, I had uh, blood in my jizz for like uh, three, four days after that. On some biker shit. Yeah. BMX. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was kind of weird, man. I just kept jerking off because every time I jerked off, there would be less blood. Ah, bro, you wow. <laughs> I'm just being you real. Wow. <laughs> And you know what was really filthy about that? Is that there was a girl I was fucking with at the time, this crazy-ass porn star, this fucking psychopath. And she was so mad afterwards because she was like, do you know how much I wanted? I would love to have had your, your, your blood come on my face? Because right. I avoided her for a few days <laughs> when this was going on because I knew we were going to hook up and I didn't want her to realize that also my nuts really hurt during all this. You should have damn there went for it, bro. You should have gave her the blood. Vampire Dirt nut, bloody, yeah. blast that all over her face. I know. I kind of look back on that like, fuck. I might have missed out on a good opportunity there. Wildin', bro. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know what one I really liked that really had me like rolling around on the ground laughing last night? Who was that? When you see your teacher from from high school, oh, yeah. after high school. Yeah, we all got a teacher like that, and nigga, they just kept sleeping. You like? That never occurred to me. Like, maybe culturally, I was just coming from a different place, but it never occurred to me of like, oh, I'm gonna like see this teacher down the road and just punk them, like take out, like they're like the the jail warden or some shit where like they've done these injustices. What to about you. like the nigga that uh, if a nigga, I right, put it this way, bro, I can't swim and shit. So like the niggas that used to try to make you change for swimming, like nigga, don't put me on the spot like that, like bro, right. like, you get what I'm saying? So you feel some type of way about shit like that. I mean, teachers would act differently if they knew that they could get hemmed up after the fact, like down the road, you know? Yeah, yeah. But pretty much all my teachers, when I think about it, were women. Not a handful of dudes, yeah, yeah, but not a lot. Yeah, I feel it. Yeah, it is mostly, I guess, women in that field type shit. Do you think you have to be kind of a weirdo to be a dude and want to, like... I had this topic. I had this convo with somebody before, and I, I, don't, I don't know, bro. It just mean you got, like, a nurturing side to you as a man type yeah, shit. That's kind of bitch made. Ooh, I, I ain't going to say that. Shout <laughs> out mean, to the man teachers. It's kind of weird, right? Like, I mean, I don't know. Because, okay, if it was a really well-paid job, then that. I get it. But it's not. I will say this. You don't never see a grown-ass man working at a daycare. You'll never. Didn't you used to work at a daycare? Yeah, sort of. My sort of. bad. It was more on the like, business side, I think. But he my cousin, though. You know what I mean? He, he get away with it. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I just like have seen that on Twitter lately. It was like some conservative, like Republican-type person basically saying, if you're a man and you want to teach kids and you're a weirdo. And I was like, wow, I never thought about it like that before, but... You might have a little bit of a point. I mean, I think it's pretty noble to want to, like, teach kids. Right. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, so give them credit type shit. But, like, what? You have, like, if you're a male teacher, then you're going to have to have your girl, like, out, like, selling pussy or stripping or something because somebody got to make some money in this family, right? Right. Right. Wait, well, you saying teachers don't get paid? <laughs> they don't make shit. That's compared to you, bro. You getting that Compared man, to a lot of people, bro. When you actually see, like, what teachers get paid, it's fucking dark, bro. When you consider that responsibility of how important what they're doing is. Right. And then, like, but also, like, you know, you remember from elementary school and shit. I mean, like, it's, it's not, it, it can't be that fun of a job. These kids, I, we treated our teachers terrible. Yeah, niggas did anything to the teachers. Horrible things. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah! Oh, um, why you uh, why you grow your hair back, bro? You was working with the uh, the skeezer. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. It looks good on you. Look like Montel Jordan. 
The little, oh yeah, that's my man. Now we're gonna talk to to Sally. Yeah. yeah. No, but I uh, yeah, I guess I was just kind of sick of looking like a Nazi skinhead, and like everybody just kept saying I look like even the people who weren't like, oh, you look like a Nazi. It was like you look a little aggressive. But you went like you voluntarily had a ball head, bro. Like this, I'm I, I got forced into this life, bro. Why the hairline just started receding? Hell yeah, just running <laughs> my family like. I mean, and that's what motivated you to start making money doing comedy is like maybe I can get my Tory Lane surgery if I just kill it. No, I ain't, I ain't even getting the surgery, bro. I'm gonna rock out with the body. Mm. They yeah. haven't invented that shit in Pittsburgh yet. Huh? The hair transplant? I don't know. There's probably somebody getting it out there. Man, I ain't getting that joint. You gotta go to Beverly Hills. And my fuckers be saying I need to get my teeth fixed. I ain't doing none of that shit. Teeth don't look that bad. Yeah, all right. See, I yeah, mean, like, the, straight, the, 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 these ones ride up a little high. See, no, nah, your shit like is, see, bro, like, my fuckers, I don't look. know. My fuckers was able to get braces and shit, like, no, I'm not saying me. Like, that's my whole point of, like, bro, I came up with We couldn't get that shit, so now I ain't going to go get that shit now, bro. Like, I'm a grown-ass man. Yeah, you got to stay stay approachable. See what I'm saying? Relatable. Yeah. Hey. Fucked up hairline, bad teeth. This is going to keep you in the, you know. Here we go. It's a believable fucking perspective. Here we go, yeah. That's, that's your merch right there? Yeah. Where your mom's at? Where your mom at, nigga? <laughs> That's just the one that that goes crazy. Do you sell a lot of those? Yeah, yeah, my fuckers definitely be copping. I press these bitches myself too, so it's made with love. Really? You're making it in the crib or what? In the crib, yeah. I bought the little machine and I be in there. <laughs> right. With the little heat press. What's going on with the pinwheel hat? Bro, this is this is good times. I'm, I'm bringing joy to the motherfucking no chumper. Yeah, no, that's what I was thinking. That's like I wish know. this bitch would just keep spinning up. I don't like having to do that shit myself. It brings like a childhood style you joy to I'm any saying? situation, yeah. right? And I do it for the young niggas. So go get y'all one. Right, get a pinwheel hat. You selling those too? No. Nah, oh, see, you thinking of good ass ideas and shit? I might need see? to come out with some pinwheel hats. Move out to L.A. and just you know start doing business selling pinwheel hats. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. Um. What about like the the hood movies type shit that you've uh, done on your oh, channel, bro? That was the funnest shit. Oh, I'm gonna just say now, I ain't make no money off that shit though. Really? Why? Because they ain't fuck with. Uh, let's put it this way: the second consignment, consignment betrayal, like that shit had like bro in there. He was coking crack. Uh -huh. You can't put that on YouTube. Yeah. So they took that. You know what I mean? They took the money out the first consignment. They took it out because we had Wapo song in it and shit. So whoever mm. his uh, people with the who own his shit, they took the, uh, the money and shit. I don't know. Just little shit like that. Yeah. So I forget that. Uh, we had, there was another joint, uh, first day out, the comedy joints. But that shit was fun as hell, bro. Yeah, it was fun actually making it. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. But is it kind of weird because it feels like your audience, like you've created like a pretty decent sized audience in terms of subscribers, followers, <laughs> et cetera. But they want like one thing from you more than anything else, don't you feel? And not your dick or your ball sack regenerated. Right, right, right. Ah! So you saying like the uh, the skits and shit? Yeah, it's like it's just kind of. But kinda... no, there's niggas. There's definitely niggas, especially Pittsburgh niggas. Like, bro, make another consignment, make another consignment. But it, even that though, like, bro, like when we went into that, it's just all improv. Like, mm -hmm. we didn't. I ain't write shit. We just turn the camera on. All right, bro, y'all ready for this thing? Fuck it, let's get it. Right. We just start talking about shit. Yeah. There was no fucking storyline involved. We just, all right, fuck it. We need a shooting scene. Let's just, fuck it. Somebody start shooting. <laughs> shit like that. <laughs> that's just how somebody. we, yeah, no, nah, that's just how we was going with it. Right. Damn. Shit was fun as hell. Though. You need somebody, you need like an investor. You need somebody to give you a bag to make some crazy level of content. Yeah. Do you feel like if you really had a budget, you'd be able Bro, to make some crazy shit? I really shit? do, like, like, like on the Ice Cube type shit. Mm. I mean, somebody put the money behind him. Fuck with your boy. Yeah. yeah. That's why you gotta move out here, bro, and just start making rich friends. You're gonna find some fucking billionaire and you're gonna just convince him to fund all these ideas. Yeah, what's up with Jeff Bezos and shit? Elon Musk, what's up with y'all niggas, man? You're really going to the top of the food chain right there. I don't oh, know if they'd be interested. Uh, turn but... it down. <laughs> all right. Are you uh have you been making like an effort to like get more into, you know, like doing TV or movies or anything like that? Is there is that something you're really interested in? I mean, yeah, but at this point, I don't even know how to. I'm trying to get in there. I don't know how to get in there, though. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I got just got rough shoulders with them, yeah, you know I mean? Yeah, that's real. Um, yeah, 
I don't know. Do you have anything else uh, planned? Anything else that we should uh, discuss here? Uh, I mean, I could. I'll definitely probably get into some more rapping and shit. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. how's that going? Oh shit, like that. I, I just be fucking around on the beat. I fucks with it. It's fun. Right. You prefer to like do it in more of like a comedic way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want niggas to take it too serious. You get what I'm saying? I'm still a comedian. At the end of the day, I ain't fucking with uh, none of the big ass rappers. You know what I'm saying? Them niggas is coming hard. Right. Oh, matter of fact, shout out to Uzi and shit. I wouldn't even be on this motherfucker if it wasn't for him type shit. Uzi show you love? Uzi show me major love, bro. How so? Fucks with Uzi, bro. Uh. I mean, the nigga reached out to me a couple times. Like, I don't know. He a real nigga, bro. Really? He a real nigga. I'm telling you that, bro. Like, Uzi, Uzi official. He reposted your shit? Or? Yeah, but like, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to just leave it. Yeah, Uzi official. Interesting. Fucks with me. Hmm. For sure. I reached out to 52 recently. And he hit you back? Nah, nigga he ain't fucking with me. Man, I'm pretty far in the game. I hit 50 up mad times and he didn't respond either. Huh. I even uh, told Tony I, Yayo, like, yo, tap me in. Didn't do anything. Damn. I know. I right, just cool. He big money. <laughs> yeah, a little too big. I don't know. Yeah. Um. All right, shit. Anything else that we should uh, establish? Anything else you want to air out? or? Uh... <clears throat> nah, I mean, that's about it. That's about it. That's about it. Where y'all niggas' moms at, man? Huh? Where your moms at? My oh, sure. boy. Hey, I'm a fan of the content, man, so keep cranking it out. And hopefully we can use this to create some connections. We got to get you in the game, bro. I appreciate you. I don't know. We got to find out what Elon Musk, if, if he's interested in sponsoring some hood films. Appreciate you. Tap in. Elon. Tesla guy. Yeah, nigga, I'll drive a Tesla. I'll, I'll do all that, bro. I'll promote your shit, bro. I'll pop a Tesla. Come on, nigga. On stream. On live. Let's go. Lou Ratchet. Also, where the name came from? Because you oh, had I the mean, ratchet on you? Or it's just you were being ratchet? Uh, I would, it's like a, a double joint. What's that? A double a double, a, un, a double entendre. Un, entendre. <laughs> that's, that's how you, that's how you read it? Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So, like, my granddad gave me the name Lou. I ain't know how to say, like, you and pronounce all that shit back in the day. So, yeah. Took that. I've been Lou since a kid type shit. But then I threw the ratchet on it. My man, who passed away, he gave me that shit, and I just took it, took it and ran with it. For sure. That's what's up. All right, well, Lou Ratchet, No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world on YouTube and Patreon. We got the patrons on the screen right now. Like, comment, subscribe, nojumper.com if you want to support. Friday, no we'll jumper. be listening to your music. Sub to my guy, too. Go search Lou Ratchet right now on YouTube. All that. Appreciate, Appreciate you, man. My man. <laughs>